Yo, what's up guys, how you all doing? I'm Paul Tech Giant, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you what I think are the best burning prevention settings for an LG OLED TV. Now, along with those settings, I'm gonna be giving you some top tips on things that you can do to preserve the life of that OLED panel. Now, for this demonstration, I'm gonna be using my LG C10 OLED, but don't worry if you've got an older model because a lot of these settings will still apply, but you may find that they are just located um, in a different part of the menu. Now, a lot of people say to me, um, you know, why should I have to implement these sort of settings? You know, when I've done previous videos like this in the past, well, fact is you don't have to. Use as many or as little as you feel fit for your own TV. You know, if you don't wanna use any of the anti-burning prevention features, then don't just use it like a normal TV. But for those who may worry a little bit more, then feel free to fill your boots and use as many of these tips and settings as you wish. So for our first setting then, we're gonna to wanna to grab our remote control and do a long press on the settings button. Hold that down for a couple of seconds and then that should bring up this menu. Gonna to wanna to go to picture and OLED screen saver. Now once you're in there, you're gonna see screen shift and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this is turned on. Now what this does is just simply move the whole image just backwards and forwards just ever so slightly. You you never notice it at all unless you've got your nose pressed up against the screen itself. And it just keeps those pixels moving around. So if you've got anything static on the screen, it should you know reduce the sort of wear on the panel. Now our next setting is logo luminance adjustment. And as you can see out of the box, it is generally set to low, but we also have the options of off and high. Now what this does is if you've got a static image on the screen, that it should reduce the brightness of the area where that static image is. But um, from what I can sort of tell when I've like messed around with this, all it seems to do is lower the overall brightness of the screen and setting it from low to high, just uh, adjust the amount of time before that actually reduced brightness kicks in. But for the optimal setting, you wanna set this to high. So if you do have any static images on the screen, that will reduce the brightness as soon as possible. Now, whilst we're in this neck of the woods, it'd be rude not to talk about the pixel refresher. Now, a lot of you guys ask me about this and uh, wanna know how often you should run it. Well, simple answer is you should only really run it if you notice any screen uniformity issues or if the TV prompts you to do so, because the uh, TV will automatically run a small pixel refresh itself after four hours of usage, which saves you having to do it yourself. So really just leave that alone unless you notice any issues. Now for our next setting, we're gonna to wanna to be in our uh, main settings menu again here. Go down to general, then to additional settings, and eco mode and in here you're going to want to go to auto power off now it does exactly what it says on the tin it uh, powers off the tv automatically and this uh, just gives you the option of how soon or how late you want that to happen now i was always recommend setting this as low as possible to two hours um, so if you was to you know turn the tv on then immediately fall asleep you know that after two hours, that TV will turn off automatically, which uh, is gonna massively reduce the chance of any potential burning if you've got a static logo left up on that screen. Now, when that two hours does come around, the TV will prompt you to press a button on the remote. And uh, if you do, the TV then just continues as normal. And if you don't, like I said, the TV shuts off. So it's not like you've got to turn the TV back on again if you are still awake and watching it. Now, as you guys will probably have figured out by now, every time you turn on the TV, you get the home menu pop up on the screen, like we're about to see any second now. There we go. And, uh, you know, over time, you never know, that could potentially be a issue. I know it's only up there for a small amount of time, but um, you know, every time it pops up, needlessly it's needless wear on that panel so how do we get around this well grab your remote control do a long press on the settings button 
go down to general then home settings once we're in there we want to go to home auto launch and then simply turn that off so if we back out of that now turn off the tv and then turn it back on again what we will find is that the tv will just come on as uh, he says turn it back on should be coming on now there we go now the tv should just turn on but this time without that home menu coming up so we are reducing that very very small chance of any sort of burning i know it's only tiny but you know it all adds up at the end of the day and any little thing that we can you know help reduce and increase that reduce the risk and help increase the panel life the better and there you go see nothing popping up whatsoever now one question i often get asked is regarding burning when it comes to watching sporting events and the news now as we all know uh often news channels will have static logos up in the corner displaying the channel name and ticker tapes at the bottom of the screen and with sporting events same sort of thing as we can see just there we've got the uh channel logo there and we've got like results or whatever you want to call it down at the bottom just there now not everyone wants those being displayed all the time because again of burning risk some do again fair enough just leave them up and use the tv as normal but if you do want to do away with them then i have a great tip for you now on the older oleds you did have a zoom function but on this c10 and the 2020 models fortunately they done away with that but what you can do is uh, go to your settings by doing a long press on the settings button picture and aspect ratio now on here we're going to want to go to four-way zoom now what i do is uh just adjust that image a little bit like that so stretch out a bit and then you can use these directional buttons then to move the image about or manipulate it to get it to exactly where you want so just like that if i back out of that now as you can see we have got rid of that bar at the bottom of the screen and uh, depending on how far you know those logos or whatever intrude into the screen depending on how much you've got to zoom in you know pretty much say in the obvious there but i don't think it really uh, interferes too much with the image and this could also be applied to like sort of uh kids shows and things like that again they often quite have bright logos up in the corners and i know we've done that with our tvs in the past our oled ones just cropped in just a little bit you can leave them then for hours on end knowing that you know that logo is not going to burn in now this next one isn't so much as a setting or a tip it's more of a heads up now a lot of people ask me you know how do you prevent things like netflix and youtube burning in you know if you leave them on for a long time i had someone say recently that uh, their children mess around on like netflix and that and they're worried about it being stuck on a static image for a long time well good news is that these do have inbuilt screen savers so i've got netflix on just here i'm going to put down the remote control and uh we're just going to leave it for a little while and see exactly what happens and there we go the automatic screen saver has kicked in which has removed that risk of burning now if we do want to get netflix back up all we do is simply press button on the remote and there we go it fires back into life and the good thing is this works on all the inbuilt apps on the tv so like i say youtube netflix disney all that sort of stuff so as you know if anything is left on that screen you know the film is ended you falling asleep sort of thing then that will kick in and save the day now whilst that automatic screensaver is great for the inbuilt apps on the tv sadly it does not kick in for any external devices that are connected to the tv so with this playstation 5 if we've got this connected up now and i do nothing with the uh the controller this will just sit there for hours and hours and hours on end especially if we've not got that tv to set to turn off automatically which is not great but what I would suggest to do is to go into the settings on uh, maybe your external device like a DVD player or a games console and they generally all have a, like an eco mode to automatically power off just like the TV after a set amount of time. So on this PlayStation, I'm going to go into settings, 
down to system, down to power saving, uh, set time until PS5 enters rest mode. And then we've got a couple of options there for gameplay and media playback. And in there, we can set it from 20 minutes right up to five hours. And I think this is great because if you implement the uh, one that we did earlier for the TV, basically covering your back twice. Now, let's just demonstrate for a minute exactly what would happen to this TV if the PlayStation 5 was to automatically power down itself. So I'm going to manually shut it off and let's see. And there we go, we've got the no signal image box come up there and uh, this now will scroll through a number of uh, pictures. And a lot of you guys have contacted me and said, you know, I'm a bit concerned that this may burn in over time uh, on my TV. Now, whilst I don't think these images themselves will burn in, what may happen if you were to leave this for a long period of time is uh, they are quite intense, so it may just degrade the overall sort of brightness of that panel. You know, it's just unnecessary wear, but I do have a solution. So I'm gonna show you that right now. So grab your remote control and do a long press on that settings button once again. Then we're gonna head on down to general, then additional settings. And then once we're in there, we're gonna to go to no signal image. Now, a lot of people seem to think that if you turn this off, it will remove that box that says no signal. But unfortunately, it doesn't. And I'm going to demonstrate exactly what it does. So I'm going to turn it off. And there you go. It removes that background. So now we just get that sign up there saying no signal. But as you can see, the rest of the background is black, which is definitely going to be a lot better on the panel itself because you've not got that bright image, which is going to uh, just degrade it over time. And just having this uh, logo there or si no signal image or uh, text, should I say, um, moving around the screen is going to ca cause as minimum amount of wear as possible. Now, as you can see at the moment, I've got the LG OLED turned off. And uh, over there, I have a external sky or satellite box, which is also turned off. But at the moment, if I was to accidentally hit that power button, or say one of my children was, let's just turn that on there, you will notice that also it powers on the TV. Now, if you're like me, a parent with small kids, you know, they like to grab remotes and things like that. And whilst you may have put the remote out of the way of the uh, for the TV and the TV is turned off, they might accidentally, you know, touch the power button for one of these external devices, which then turns on the TV. Again, could be having an image left up there for a considerable amount of time. Well, I have a solution that will put an end to that issue. So long press on the remote once again, and this time we're gonna head down to connection. Once we're in connection, we're gonna to go to device connection settings, and then in there, we're gonna to go to auto power sync, and this is where you're gonna to wanna to turn that off. Now, obviously, you know, this is now gonna stop that skybox automatically turning on your TV. So if you're the sort of person who wants that, fair enough, you know, leave that on. Like I said, with all these settings, just pick and choose what you want. But like I said, if uh, you've got kids and that, you know, this could be a bit of a lifesaver. I've had it a few times where the kids have not one button on and it's turned on the TV um, unknowingly to me. And even once my uh, skybox, for some bizarre reason, turned itself on at night when we went to bed, and um, I heard something um, in the night come downstairs and yeah, it had automatically turned the TV on as well. I mean, it's a good job that I noticed that um, because again, if I hadn't put on the other settings, potentially, you know, that could have been sat there for sort of eight hours through the night, just burning in. So uh, could be a potential great tip for some of you out there. Now, one final tip for you guys is that if you perform any software updates with your LG OLED TV, it's always worth just double checking your settings um, once that update has been done. I've had a few people contact me in the past saying that they've done an update and then they've uh, gone back to their settings and uh, they've been reset or for some reason been altered to uh, what they uh, set to themselves. So yeah, just worth noting that. And also, 
that you'd like to think that each TV that comes out of the factory would all have exactly the same settings from out of the box. But um, unfortunately, that isn't always the case. So whilst you may think that everything should be set perfectly up when it comes to sort of uh, these settings to prolong the life of the panel, not always the case. I've had different ones on different um, OLEDs before. So just double check, you know, that they are what you want them to be. Well, there you go then, guys. Hopefully some great settings and tips to put your mind at ease when it comes to burning on your LG OLED TV. Now, if you've liked this video today, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And please, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then think about subscribing for more of the same in the future. So thanks very much for joining me today. And hopefully I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye for now.